This is a massive roll top desk that's more than 100 years old. And this is me just a few months ago. So what makes this desk so special? And can I actually restore it? I recently found a major clue as to the origin of this desk. And it's one of my favorite places in the city. So I hope you'll join me for this adventure. I'm on the way to find out if this desk did indeed survive a major fire. And was it, in fact, the governor's desk? One of the things I love most about working on old furniture is that many of the furniture pieces have clues regarding their history. The first clue for this desk is here in plain sight. This desk was manufactured by the Wolger Manufacturing Company out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. For well over 100 years, Milwaukee, Wisconsin has been a major hub for manufacturing. Due to its strategic location along the shores of Lake Michigan, Milwaukee is one of many cities that has benefited from the shipping industry. Other major cities in the Great Lakes region would include Chicago, Illinois, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Detroit, Michigan. In the same way that Detroit, Michigan is known for the automobile industry, Milwaukee, Wisconsin has several world-renowned companies still in operation today most notably the Harley-Davidson Company. As I began working on this desk, I did notice some obvious wear and tear, which is to be expected for a desk this old. The question was, does this warrant a full restoration? I purchased this desk several months ago from a Facebook Marketplace listing, and the desk appears to be made from mostly white oak. The seller was listing this desk on behalf of the previous owner, a gentleman who is now in his 90s. His mother was the previous owner who purchased this desk from the state capitol building in the 1960s at a time when she was working in the post office of the capitol building. This desk was initially listed as state capitol desk, so this wasn't my discovery. However, when I did find one of the original labels under the middle drawer, I knew I had to do some more research. At the same time this story was developing, AdMotor reached out to me to try their new AdMotor Grand Tan M340 electric trike. I wasn't sure how this would relate to a furniture channel, but then I had an idea. You would expect most new e-bikes or e-trikes to perform well on a nice beautiful sunny day. But here in Wisconsin, people often ride year-round, regardless of the weather. This AdMotor e-trike comes with a detailed digital display, hazard lights, turn signals, brake lights, a step-through frame, and ergonomic seating. This e-trike comes equipped with an 85-plus mile range on the 48-volt lithium battery, and with a 750-watt brushless motor, 4-inch fat tires, and disc brakes, I expect this to perform well in all conditions. I'll link all the information for this AdMotor e-trike in the description below. A simple test with a magnet revealed that the hardware is non-magnetic, indicating that these are likely solid brass. So I'll remove all the drawer pulls and attempt to polish them. I've had a lot of furniture pass through my shop in the last few years. And buying and selling furniture for a profit is one of the ways to continue this small business. It's probably true that most furniture refinishers would like to keep all the furniture pieces that they work on, but that wouldn't be very practical for many reasons. So what's my intention with a desk that's six feet in length and takes up all this space in my shop? The truth is most desks don't sell well anymore. There was a time a few years ago when many people were working from home and desks were in high demand, but either those people have returned to work or found what they're looking for. A desk this size is not very practical for most people's living spaces. 
I have a few ideas of what I might use this desk for, but to be honest, I purchased it simply because the listing was too good to turn down. I asked the question at the beginning of this video, does this desk need a full restoration? And in my opinion, the answer is no. There are some signs of normal wear and tear, but I'm content with the overall condition. I've cleaned the entire desk with a degreaser, and now I'm using fine steel wool to apply restore finish in the color golden oak. Making videos on YouTube has been a wonderful creative outlet for me, and I'm sure there are some who click on a restoration video who prefer just to watch the simple steps of the actual restoration. But for me, I'm captivated by the entire experience of this restoration journey. On this day, the lake was still frozen over, and it was 28 degrees Fahrenheit with several inches of snow on the ground. For some, I'm sure that sounds like a miserable experience, but believe me when I say I was having the time of my life. And it turns out I wasn't even the most interesting person on the road that day. It should be no surprise at this point that this massive roll top desk came out of the Wisconsin State Capitol building. I couldn't help but think about the possible irony of riding here on this day. Would the person who used this desk in the early 1900s have ridden a bike to work every day? Or a horse-drawn buggy? The beautiful exterior of this building was built using Bethel White granite out of the state of Vermont. The Wisconsin lady that stands on top of this building is 16 feet tall and is made from solid bronze. She weighs over three tons and is covered in 22 karat gold. I'll be very clear about one thing as I track down the story of this old desk. At no point, if I can help it, will politics be the focus of this story. Instead, I wish to acknowledge all the men and women who helped build this iconic landmark for the people of Wisconsin. In fact, it's still open to the public 365 days a year. Restore Finish is a unique finish penetrating formula that restores wood finishes while blending out minor scratches, blemishes, and abrasions. With a simple wipe on, wipe off process, most finished wood surfaces that seem to need a complete refinishing job can be restored in just a few minutes. This process can help remove heat rings and watermarks, sun fade, oxidation, smoke damage, and most other blemishes. Restore Finish restores the finish without removing any of the existing finish. I often clean old furniture hardware by soaking it in vinegar, then applying Barkeeper's Friend. It's not uncommon to find that some of this hardware had been covered with a thick layer of lacquer to prevent oxidation. So this time, using these simple polishing techniques didn't exactly yield the results I was looking for. There was still quite a bit of lacquer. Since this hardware is solid brass, I can move on to a more abrasive technique by using a wire wheel on the buffer. I was very pleased with the final results. So I decided to repeat this process with the remaining drawer pulls. Using restore finish on old furniture may seem easy, but a desk this size was no easy task. Just a few days after purchasing this roll top desk, I found this old oak chair in a thrift store for $7. This one was manufactured by Milwaukee Chair Company, and I believe it's from the same era. As I continued piecing the parts of this story together, this was finally the part that began to make sense. 
I've toured this public building many times, but never through the eyes of an owner of a desk that came from this very building. This is the main rotunda and is one of the largest domes by volume in the entire world. It's been said that the entire cost to construct this building in the early 1900s was around $7.2 million. There are 43 different stones, 30 of which are marble, that were used to construct this building. The green stone was marble from Greece, the red from Algeria, and the railways were from France. Some of the other countries represented in this building were Norway, Germany, and Italy. Most of the red granite that you see in this building came from right here in Wisconsin. The Wisconsin state animal is the badger and there are many references to this throughout the building. I completely understand that most viewers on the channel are not specifically interested in learning about the history of the state of Wisconsin. It was not my intention to share a tour of this place on the channel. The entire objective is to find out more about this giant roll top desk that currently sits in my workshop. And I think I finally found what I'm looking for. This is the Wisconsin Supreme Court, obviously not in session on this day but a space that's open to the public most days out of the year. Most of the furniture still used in this space does appear to be old, but not as old as the piece that I'm currently working on. Most of this furniture appears to be made from mahogany or oak. And finally, as I was walking out of the Supreme Court, there they were, the same style of desk that currently sits in my workshop. Most of us are probably guilty of not paying much attention to the portraits on the wall, but I couldn't help but think which one of these men used the desk that sits in my workshop. It's my understanding that these desks were mostly refinished with a dark mahogany finish during a major restoration project in the 1990s. And finally, this desk was what I was hoping to find here. This desk is the one that closely resembles the desk that I have in my shop. The one in the shop is six feet in length and this one is four feet in length. This desk was used by John B. Cassidy, who was the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court from 1895 to 1907. This leads me to believe that this style of desk was manufactured prior to the fire of 1904. It's also a possibility that following the fire of 1904, the same furniture manufacturing company was commissioned to produce the same style of furniture as was in the previous Capitol building. If someone as important as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court had the smaller version of this desk, then who would have been more important? The Lieutenant Governor or the Governor? I really don't know the answer to that. But if I can be brutally honest, the truth is I don't actually care. What difference does it make if this desk had belonged to Thomas Jefferson, Joe Schmo, or Jane Doe? I'm more interested in the stories of the average citizens. The men and women who harvested the lumber to build this furniture. I'm more interested in learning about the daily lives of the millions of factory workers across this nation. I have a great respect for all of our nation's leaders, but the utmost respect for those who made the ultimate sacrifice and to the men and women who helped build this country brick by brick. They are indeed true backbone of this country. This is the final room that I wanted to see before I return home to my project. This is the governor's conference room, a room that has the most 22 karat gold in the entire building. 
The Venetian style shown here was inspired by the Doge's Palace in Venice, Italy. This week in the mail is an opportunity for me to say thank you to all of those who sent tools, postcards, and letters this week. I also want to say welcome to all the new patrons on the channel. A heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you for making this channel possible. As I wrapped up this tour and head back home to see how this desk turned out, I was encouraged by what I had learned, but I was also left with so many unanswered questions. So the story certainly doesn't end here. There are certainly other resources, such as the Historical Society. There's a very large piece of the puzzle that I left out of this video. This desk was actually a set, and the second piece of furniture was just as large as the desk. I'll be sharing a very short clip of that piece on my Instagram account and my Patreon page. My name is Barry, and thank you for all your support. Goodbye for now.